Hello there and welcome to JJ Painting. I am JJ and what happens on this channel for those of you who don't know? Well what happens on this channel is we take a topic from the hobby, something that might be quite new, maybe a retrospective, sometimes a review of a book, we take a model from the hobby, we paint it all up whilst we have a little chat and we do a little bit of exploration into this topic. It's all very casual and hopefully quite fun for you guys to watch at home. So for today's video what we're going to be doing is we're going to be painting this model right here. Yes, so that's going to be our model and our topic for today as you can probably tell is the perspective of the Warhammer 40,000 universe. Who is it from? How does it affect how it has been shaped? And what does that mean for 40k as a whole? So quite a big topic but I'm sure we can fit it all in. So without further ado, let's crack on. So whilst this isn't strictly speaking a lore video, there are definitely things that are going to be very lore related in this video. And the first thing I want to do when talking about the 40k perspective is talk about fantasy instead and Age of Sigma. So the first thing to remember about the way they look at their worlds and their universes always very much was top down. You get a look at the whole world with everyone in it and everything that's going on. And it is relatively evenly distributed where you see things from. You can zoom in from the perspective of the forces of chaos or the forces of Nagash or the forces of the Stormcast Eternal or the Empire, respectively, depending on which one you're looking at, Dwarves, Elves, etc, etc. And when you read their battle tomes, it's very interesting to see that it very much feels like all of those books are written from the perspective, or at least partly from the perspective, of the army you're playing as. It doesn't necessarily feel like it's a third party documenting this very specific group for you to then read on yourself. But with 40k on the other hand, it's very fair to say that the whole thing is written from the perspective of the Imperium. And the Imperium of Man's journey for the last 10,000 years or so since the Horus Heresy. Now, this does obviously come with a few strengths. We've seen a very deep dive into the Imperium, all the various parts of it, both militarily, civilian life, and how it functions as a society, which are, to be fair to it, quite interesting and quite good world building. It has a very deep backstory in the Horus Heresy, albeit one that maybe overshadows it, which we'll get to in another video. And everything that we see from within the Imperium and looking at the Imperium from the outside, we understand partly because, you know, most people who play 40k are humans, I assume, and we have a bit more of an immediate grasp as to what's going on. But at the same time, because all the work has gone into them, it very much makes it feel like it's the story of the Imperium and everyone else's backstories are just that, backstories to the Imperium. Now, obviously, the disadvantage of this very much makes it feel like the other races suffer. So their backgrounds and motivations lack the same depth, maybe, and definitely don't have the same internal conflicts or the same sub-factions that are as obvious in, as they are within the Imperium. A great example of this is that we know plenty about the various rivalries between the Space Marine chapters, the Inquisition constantly rubbing up against the same groups, the Astra Militarum's place in the wider things, and the relationship between the Adeptus Mechanicus and the Imperium at large but we don't have the same context for the clans of the orcs or even the high fleets of the tyranids or even really the craft worlds for the Eldar. We do sort of have a bit of sense between how things work with the craft worlds and the Drakari, but even then it's very much hinted and it's very vague and it hasn't been fleshed out in the same way even with a few novels that have explored it. Now what all this leads me on to saying and thinking is that when it comes to talking about the perspective of the 41st millennium, it's very easy to look at it very much as the story of the Imperium and nothing else really. And that would be completely fair and not the least bit invalid. However, there's also a bit more to be said about here when we can get more specific. Whose perspective within the Imperium are we looking at? Because like I said, when it comes to the other races, if you read most of the codexes, with maybe the exception of the Chaos Codexes, it very much feels like they're all written by someone within the Imperium writing the backstory of things like the Orcs, or the Tyranids, or the Tau, or the Eldar. It doesn't feel like they themselves have written these books about themselves, it very much feels like someone else documenting another species they've observed, which is quite an interesting way of actually engaging with those species when you play the game as a side note. But when we then talk about the Imperium and whose perspective is it from within the Imperium, that's where it suddenly becomes a lot less specific. 
There is a very strong argument to be made that the entire 41st millennium and everything that takes place within it is actually from the perspective of the Space Marines. They are, after all, the introductory race. They are on the front and centre of everything Games Workshop do. Their entire backstory basically shaped and defined the Imperium when we talk about the Horus Heresy, the Beast Arises, and virtually every major campaign doesn't really seem to get into the history books unless there's a Space Marine involved somewhere, with the obvious exception being the Sabbath World Crusades, all hail Dan Abnett, may he forever shine his fantastic stories upon us and forever see us mere mortals as potential vectors for his new stories. Anyway, moving on from that. But when you look at a lot of the rhetoric, for want of a better word, and a lot of the copy that goes in with when you read about the 41st millennium, you would be forgiven for thinking the entire thing is written from the perspective of Space Marines. The idea of a failing Imperium, enemies all around, there is only war, and all the stuff which we normally see front and centre when we read about the Imperium and about 40k. But when you then think about what a Space Marine's life really is and the sort of culture they grow up in, that starts to make a bit more sense. Because arguably until the Indomitus Crusade, they were very much living with a sense that the glory days were behind them, overwhelmed, overworked, and engrossed by the endless conflict, somewhat embarrassed and definitely taking very personally the fact that the Chaos Space Marines kind of ruined their stick way back during the days of the Horus Heresy, and obviously things like the Inquisition subvert everything they do and make them out like they can't be trusted, whilst themselves having to prove that they aren't actually heretics by not only staying loyal to the Imperium, but following things like the Codex Astartes to the absolute letter. And to be honest, when you then rattle all that back off, it's then very easy to think that maybe this is written from the perspective of a space marine. This whole world, this whole galaxy of endless conflicts, because ultimately that's what they're in for. Now, I know that this isn't really, you know, city skylines or Sim City or a Sims kind of deal where we are, you know, building col col colonies on distant planets and keeping everyone fed and watered and making sure all the taxes are paid on time, as much as that would be quite, quite an interesting game if uh, Games Workshop ever wanted to make a 40k inspired Sims game, I would definitely buy that. But when we then think about how it reflects back to both the novels, the narrative, and on top of that, the actual game itself, it's very easy to see it from that perspective. Now, obviously, everyone knows that 40k is a tabletop war game, and that's fine, that's what it is. But as the books have gone by, and we've had especially series like the Eisenhorn series, that came in and showed us different sides of the Imperium, it would actually be fair to say that maybe there is a slightly broader perspective to take on the Imperium. And the Space Marines perspective is simply the introduction to the universe so you know what's on the outside of the borders. When you then look at things like the Eisenhorn books and the Ravenna books and a lot of the other books that are based more on the Inquisition, you look at civilian life. You look at the people who live within it. Yes, many of them are living in these brutalized hellholes where they are naught but expendable cogs. But there is still a bit of depth to their society. There is still some humanity there. There are planets that are at peace. And obviously that then makes you think, how can there only be war? when we are seeing all these wonderful locales and nice locations here, there and everywhere, which don't actually have as much conflict or as violence on them. And that's when you then maybe come down to the conclusion that perhaps the Imperium might be doing all right in some areas and maybe not so much in others. But then that then leads us on to the next point is that if it's so much from the perspective of the Imperium, why do we necessarily see things at all from the perspective of the other races? Do we need to, really? And I'd argue that yes, we do, because whilst we have characters who've been introduced to us like Gazgul, Farsight, Eldrad, Ulthron, and a few of the others, maybe not so much in the Chaos Marines, because we very much know where they're from, but definitely in the Heralds of the Chaos Demon, so Scarbrand, The Mask, Kangbauer, and all the others who appear in various different books, their persp oh, and Kairos Fateweaver, obviously. They all have a bit of depth and a bit of personality, and they all have things to say, and they will have objectives. And the interesting thing is that whilst most of them are seen to only be geared towards war and destruction, from the perspective of the Imperium, that is obviously how it would look. They are simply out to destroy you. And whenever you encounter things like Orcs, for example, you think to yourself, they are only out for destruction. But then again, when we look at the Beast Arises series that came out about five years ago from the time of recording, they actually were making a somewhat implied point that the only reason Orcs are still fighting humanity is not to do with them wanting to destroy humanity and only wanting war. It's actually that humanity conquered their home planet and effectively displaced the entire Orc society. And the last 10,000 years has been one long journey in reclaiming that which was taken from them. Now, I know that Eldar and Dark Eldar are given a little bit more depth because obviously they are the last ruins of a collapsing empire, but there's not a lot of clear thought as to where they want to go next. Some would imply that maybe that they are preparing for the second coming of their own empire. Some of them feel like they are eternally doomed to wander the stars until the lights go out or until they are all rendered extinct. 
But that's another thing which I think is quite interesting, is that they do have an air of mystery about them, which does add to it. But it would be nice to maybe get a bit more specific agency as to what they want. And that then leads me to the conclusion of when it comes to talking about the 41st millennium and 40k in general, whilst it is very clearly from the perspective of humans and humanity and the human empire, the fact that we only see it from one perspective, granted a few different perspectives within that polity and within that society, can give us some different nuances. The fact that we don't get the same overall sense as to what's going on in this galaxy, I think it makes the galaxy feel a bit smaller and a bit flatter than it could be. And it would be good, I think, in the future to see a slightly broader perspective on some of those other races, like the Tau, like the Orcs, like the Eldar. The other Xenos races that exist that don't even have models either never get mentioned or are mentioned very briefly, like the Hrud, for example, and the Kroot that are very much a cameo part for the Tau. It would be good to see these races with a bit more depth and a bit more personality to make the galaxy feel a bit bigger. Because ultimately, I do think that we don't just need a galaxy of war. What we need is a galaxy full of life and personality in order for the war to make any kind of sense. And maybe I am wrong, and tell me below in the comments if you're happy with your galaxy of nothing but war, but I generally think that it would be good to see a slightly more cohesive and complete picture of what the galaxy looks like, because then it would give us some senses to what's really at stake for everyone else, not just humanity. But let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I look forward to hearing from you. So, those are my thoughts on the perspectives of 40k. Let me know your thoughts below. Do you agree about me what I say about it being very Imperium centric? Do you think it takes a more rounded view? Or do you think it does need to take a more rounded view of the other races for it to stay interesting? Let me know your thoughts below. But thank you all very, very much for watching. I try to post my videos on Wednesdays and Fridays, as I'm sure most of you know by this point who are subscribed. For those of you who don't know, I post my videos on Wednesdays and Fridays. So thank you all very much for watching. Goodbye, and have a lovely day.